questions. I'm here to talk about keyframes inside SpeedGrade. Now keyframes can be used for everything. They can be used for changing grades over time. If you had an exposure change, it could interpolate over time for pan and scanning. So if you're repurposing HD to SD material and also for masks, if you need to track masks and move them around. SpeedGrade has a built-in planar tracker. That means it doesn't require points. It looks at textures, at shapes, background, foreground, and it watches things move. But Sometimes you might have an odd thing moving in the screen and you need to edit those keyframes. So that's what this demonstration is about. How to track, how to look at the keyframes and how to make them all live and editable. Let's go have a look. Here I am in speed grade and I have a shot from Waiting for Lightning. And this is a shot of the Great Wall and you can see it pans out. And what I wanna do is I want to um, make a mask around the foreground object in here and just highlight that, maybe um, make it a little bit greener, a little bit more lush while it's backing out. So on the right hand side, I've got my masking tools and I can draw these tools. Uh, I mean, I can draw out a square or a circle or a vignette mask, or I can just come down here and actually start drawing directly inside of my frame. And Speed Grade wants to create a closed mask. So you're seeing the tail end of the mask wherever I click, it's starting to follow me around. And that's gonna make more sense when I get to the other side. So a little bit uh, of a crude mask here, very simple, and there it is. Now these points are all uh, spline points. So I'm gonna just grab my arrow tool down here and drag around every single one of them back down in here and change the node type to a corner point. There we go. So now I've got my initial mask set up in here. Uh, and here is my little widget. You know, you've, you're used to this widget before. And when we have an odd shape like this, it might be in an odd place. So if you hold down the Alt key option on Mac, you can move this to a different place. You can actually turn it on or off depending on how you want to use that. But it's important at this point, before I start tracking, it's going to be a lot easier if you make your feather amount here. And that, that makes perfect sense. Um, there's a, you probably want the same feather amount through the whole thing. So I'm going to go to this part of my little widget, drag that out, give myself a nice feather. Once I have that set down here in the bottom right hand corner, I'm going to hit track and you can see uh, it's tracking each one of the, the uh, frames and on the left hand side, it's starting to draw the keyframes in here and, and it darkens the screen just to make sure that you're concentrating on the fact that it's just working hard. So, you know, don't touch anything at this point. If you find it's going uh, off track, you can hit abort and uh, it's going to leave the keyframes that you have in place. And at that point, uh, you could tweak those keyframes or, or start tracking again. I'm just going to let this go in the background for a second here, but it might seem that uh, right out of the box, when you click this and now you start moving ahead, um, you might not think that you can edit these keyframes. They look pretty locked in, but if you turn on auto uh, keyframe on the left hand side, then they will automatically change. This is a lot like the way After Effects works, that if After Effects has one keyframe set on any parameter, then anything you touch anywhere else on the timeline is um, immediately going to make another change to that. So, what you have to be conscious of here is making changes that will result in some kind of a skip or a flip or a blip on the screen. And that happens if you're not careful of where the playhead is as you're making the keyframe change. Because remember, it's locking all of these little uh, keyframes in right now. So if you go between two keyframes and you make a, a change that's too drastic, then you'll see that jump inside there. All right, let's go have a look at what it's done. I also want to show you down at the bottom, I can open up and save these masks directly inside here and, and we get an image of the mask and I can save it with any name. I'm just going to close that right up now so we can just work with our color grading and back over and click on mask and you can see there's the mask and there are the track points that it is tracked with that kind of a push out that you see. Now, you, if you remember, while it was making keyframes, it was a keyframe on every frame. But if you let SpeedGrade finish the track, it will consolidate any frames that it can into an interpolation. So between that keyframe 
and that keyframe, it's actually interpolating between those. And right now I've got my auto on, so let me turn that off and show you what happens in between. Those are the red lines that you see um, when you're about to try to edit this, and you might be wondering what is going on. Well, right now uh, there is no keyframe in here, and speed grade is telling the mask to move from that point to that point. If I actually move to that point, you can see it turns green and I can come in here and I can make changes to this if I want to. Um, and they will show up as, as new keyframes inside. So you got to kind of be careful here. This is typical of, of even something like After Effects that if you make too large of an adjustment, you'll be able to see that. So now that I have my mask moving inside here, I'm just going to uh, take this and take the gamma up a little bit and maybe move the saturation up just a bit and there is my before and after. Now when I play that you can see that it follows the Great Wall of China the whole way. So a couple of, of uh, quick clicks on one mask and we've got this highlighted area in here. Now I do want to show you that I can actually select the keyframe and move it directly inside here. I can even hold the shift key down and select multiple ones if I want to remove one of these I can add the control shift and then remove uh, any one of these keyframes and now when I click I'm going to be dragging all of these all over the place. You can delete one simply by clicking on it and going into here and clicking the delete button. You can add more keyframes you can turn them all off so be careful of this one uh, that will delete them all uh, but you notice up here when it's red that means I can't edit if you want to edit freely in any place you can turn on uh, auto keyframe. So now wherever you are, anything you do inside here is going to immediately add another keyframe. See how it added this keyframe, but it's not interpolating it back to there, which may or may not work. If I want to interpolate between this keyframe and the previous one, make sure you're right on the keyframe and you can do that simply by clicking on this next or previous keyframe button and then add a keyframe a second time and then it will interpolate. Click on that, add a keyframe again, and it toggles between a fixed or an interpolated keyframe or a dissolved keyframe, some people call them. So a couple of easily easy clicks inside here, a track, and oh yeah, on the right-hand side, I wanna show you that we have presets on the fall-off amount, and you can use this um, preset, or you can come in here and move these around directly, and you'll start to see a little change in this little fall off diagram here about how that works and you can quickly come in here and reset these and it's just it's a great way to work you can turn on and off the widget in here so if you if you want to um, edit the keyframes and not have that widget on here then it, again it's it's more just a keyframe based more like after effects but uh, i think that is a pretty good example uh, turning that mask on and off um, on how we can add and edit keyframes. Uh, remember, these keyframes I'm showing you are masks, but the same thing applies for uh, a grade. You could have the same grade that's either uh, changing instantly, so if you wanted a, a color change without having to split a clip, you could just do that, or you can have a dissolved keyframe on an exposure over time, edit its position, uh, change the, the, uh, the mask shape, change any keyframes in here. You can also, this is important too, if I want to add um, another mask on here, as soon as I go and click and add a mask, it's going to add um, another, it's going to remove this mask and add the other mask. So if you drag grading layers on top of here, you can either drag them down like this, or um, it's also easier to click this button in here and I can be adding as many grades as I want. Each one of those grading layers can have a mask. So if you need multiple masks, um, I selected the great wall and I affected the inside of the mask. I could easily duplicate that, put it on another layer, and then affect the outside of the mask. So if I wanted to saturate the sky, lots and lots of control inside Speed Grade to create keyframes, track them, um, use auto keyframe creation, and to go in there and edit and get the exact grade that you want.